Hello, Cotton. Oh, um, hello there. Nice to meet you. Ha! Meat. I love meat. Oh, what? You look fire, my good man. Excuse me? Hellfire. Did you just <laughs> insult me? Get it? Because my hellfire is pink. The funny part is that you are much less attractive than my gases, you puny slug creature. I am... Um, I think I just carded on the inside. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, it's happening! Magnamalo has entered the Monster Hunter Rise demo, and don't worry, our pro and noob episode on this magnificent beast is already recorded, so you get to see my proper first impressions then. But based on our own experience fighting against Magnamalo, I realize that some people may just maybe, possibly, potentially like to have a little bit of a hand understanding how he works and how to fight him in order to give yourself a better chance at that elusive quest complete screen. Sound good? Good. Let's dive right into the deep end with his most in-depth mechanic, the incredibly unique and exciting Hellfire. Magnamolo has a number of attacks that will create a purple gas on the ground. If struck by him, it will instantly explode. Otherwise, it will slowly turn pink and then explode naturally. He also has some physical attacks augmented with Hellfire energy, and some attacks that fire pure balls of this Hellfire from his tail, rather than the clouds on the floor. If hit by any of these types of attacks, you will get the Hellfire debuff, the status. At first glance on the surface, this works a lot like the Blast status. Do nothing for long enough and you'll explode, affecting not just you, but also any party members that happen to be nearby you. Use deodorant or roll three times and you will lose this debuff. However, in Rise, hunters are pretty damn smart. We have wire bugs and we know how to use them in pretty ingenious ways. For example, if a hunter with Hellfire uses any sort of wire bug movement ability, meaning either of the sheathed movement wire bug moves or any unsheathed silk bind move that acts as a forward charge, the Hellfire will drop off of the hunter and instead attach to the silk left behind by the wire bug, creating a small patch of Hellfire on the floor. This patch does absolutely nothing to hunters, not to you, not to your partners. Doesn't hurt you. Doesn't even yell obscenities at you. It's just nice scenery as far as you're concerned. Magnamalo though, well, as it would turn out, he is actually not entirely resistant to his own unique element. If one of Magnamalo's attacks bring him through this patch of Hellfire Silk on the floor, it will pop and hit him for 50 damage. The first time you do this, it will also guaranteed knock him over. After this, the threshold increases and it will take multiple of these pops to cause a knockdown like any other status. This in itself created some of the coolest feeling moments I have had as a hunter and we're still only in the demo for this game. Are you, are, you recording? are you recording, Crickshaw? On top of this, Magnamalo also uses Hellfire on his body at various points in the fight to augment some of his abilities. And generally speaking, the more parts are glowing and the more pink those parts are, the more scared you should be of his existence. When any of his parts are glowing, unless your damage type is really bad against that body part, I would recommend going for it. Glowing parts are fantastic for two very strong reasons. Firstly, glowing parts just seem to take more damage in general. Whack them bits friends. Secondly, like many monsters with slowly charging states, there are ways to mess with their charging. With Magnum Mallow, it is damaging the glowing parts. Doing enough damage to glowing parts will cause a massive explosive flinch. Basically, like you are causing him to lose concentration, and then all of the gas around him just goes off, dealing a giant chunk of damage and resulting in a knockdown. Not a hugely like, long knockdown, but it's a large chunk of damage, and any knockdown is a knockdown. It's good stuff. Just one more thing that you can take advantage of. One thing of note is, like the Hellfire patch on the floor, this one seems to have diminishing returns. The first flinch knockover is relatively easy to cause. After this, it takes a bit more damage to get done. The best part of this is all of the stuff that I have mentioned, I wouldn't label that as optional for killing him. Like, some people may be able to kill him while ignoring all of this stuff, but that number is very small, I think. He is a challenge and a half, and I would say that the vast majority of hunters won't kill him without taking advantage of these mechanics in some capacity. He is super hard. I mean, generally speaking, the final advanced quest in Monster Hunter demos is one hell of a challenge. They want to really push you to the limits of what you have and create a sort of grudge match for you. Either you kill it after a lot of practice 
in the demo and it feels great then, or you don't kill it and get to go into the main game with the most immersive feeling ever of wanting vengeance on the flagship monster of the game, almost like your own personal hunter origin story. It almost feels like a message to the people worried about the difficulty of this game, that if Capcom wants to, they know exactly how to balance a fight tightly enough when they really want to in this game. This is a quest with a 15 minute timer that requires you to have near perfect precision using all of the tools around you. Generally speaking, fainting once and having to run back to the fight is enough of a time loss to not wind up killing it, but it's possible to kill it. It's doable. That said, I haven't fought him in a four player hunt, only solo and two player, so maybe four player is a bit more lenient, but my experience with this monster personally is hours and hours of trying to line up the perfect run, essentially running with a low level speed running mindset because I'm no member of Team Darkseid. But the ideas are transferable and it's something any hunter can apply to their hunts if they are struggling with something they want to kill. Planning, and I don't just mean preparing your item pouch, but truly understanding your foe and outsmarting them. I've had some decent attempts, but what you've been seeing loads of in the background is Josh's essentially perfect solo kill. We had a plan and he followed it to a T, resulting in a kill. Anyone can follow this plan, and with practice I believe in you to have the same results. Quest begins. Wire bug to the tent, grab extra potions, and the pitfall trap. Ride your dog up this path to grab spirit birds, the fire beetle, and the puppet spider. Initiate a wyvern ride on Mizutsune. It only takes a handful of silk hits on this quest. Bring Mizutsune to Magnamalo, beat him up and take his lunch money while being sure to apply water blight with the X and LS back wyvern riding attack combo. Apply the fire beetle to Magnamalo. Pop this cutterfly for some affinity. Attack glowing parts, don't die, remember to breathe. Magnamalo moves to zone 10. Follow him to zone 10 over the cliffs, grabbing the brew hair and these extra spirit birds. Land on the water blight beetle all stealthy like and pick it up. He won't notice it because he's somewhat short sighted. Place your pitfall and shock traps on the floor. Get his attention and lure him into trap one. Then apply water blight from mud beetle. Beat him up through both traps while he's water blighted. Then time for taking his dinner money. Get extra wire bug from the zone. Kick this silky spider boy at him and wyvern rides wall smash him four times real quick. Attack glowing parts. Don't die. Remember to breathe. He usually changes to zone 9 after this, but if he doesn't, make sure to go there anyways to grab the Thunder Beetle. Then go find Rathium whenever she's at Wyvern Rider. Wyvern Ride the Rathium to Magnamalo. Apply both Poison with the backflip, neutral A attack, and Fire with the A and left stick back Wyvern Ride attack, and of course, beat him up. This time, just take his whole bank account. Who the hell cares? Apply Thunder Beetle to Magnamalo. Hit Magnamalo, loss, while Thunder Beetle is active to cause the KO. Attack glowing parts, don't die, remember to breathe. He's dead. Wait, he's dead? He's fucking dead! Holy God, Mazios himself were saved! And that's it, really. I, other than that, it's all about landing your attacks and surviving his offensive onslaught. Oh, wait, you also wanted some tips for how to survive? Well, I guess I can't say no to someone just as badass as you are. So firstly, Wirefall is your friend. The ability to fling yourself up from the floor and away from the monster will save your life frequently in this fight if you get comfortable using it. There are a number of attacks in this fight that will one-shot you, but if you don't Wirefall, then a lot of attacks that don't one-shot you will still wind up killing you anyways after the fact. If playing in multiplayer, make sure to split up your assets. If one player takes the route that we mentioned before getting the fire beetle spider puppet and mizutsune a second player could instead take the right side of the map collecting other buffs and things like the snow beetle and the blast toad which is a guaranteed knockdown against him the snow beetle doesn't add a crazy amount to the process cool guys don't look at explosions but in a fight like this every little bit helps always press the advantages you have your strength in numbers allows for different preparation as for the specific attacks that he does that are most likely to cause you to cart, there are four by my count, from my already many hours with him. In descending order of danger, his big giant super combo, where he charges in a line twice around the zone, leaving massive clouds of hellfire gas behind, then jumps into the air and fires himself like a hellfire missile at his target, dealing enough damage to easily one-shot hunters in the gear that we have in the demo. The best way that I found of dealing with this is if your dog is available, climb on top and sprint away, being careful to sprint sideways if he chooses you with the big jump so you can get out of the radius. You can also use general hunter movement, sprinting, emergency evades, or even wire bugs to avoid this, but personally I found the Palamute to be my most consistent method of survival for this attack. Second to this, sometimes he will do a slightly less powerful version of just the final move of that big combo, just the jump 
jump into the air and missiles towards someone. It's still one shot to you, but this one has a lot less preamble, so you really have to stay on your toes, or it could come out of nowhere and get you. Combos are dangerous in this fight, pick your moments well. After this is the insanely cool move where he shoots a hellfire ball at you that you have to dodge, then fires a second bit of hellfire out, jumps into it himself and uses it like a thruster to reposition entirely behind you in the blink of an eye not quite teleporting but goddamn close to it and then he goes for a big hefty spear thrust from behind this move might not one shot you every time but until you recognize the animation of this it will just be absolutely terrifying every time it happens it will almost hit you every time until you recognize what is going on then finally probably my favorite attack that he has from a visual standpoint one that i lovingly refer to as the wizard beam. He takes a sideways pose, swirls his tail around as you can visibly see the energy building up before only this attack, and then like a staff, he just fires this gorgeous cylindrical beam of purple pink hellfire energy. It's just so cool. This one is a one shot if it hits you, but it is pretty easy to dodge with just left or right movement as long as you aren't stuck in the middle of an animation once again. The main thing I do want to draw attention to with this attack though is actually look at it closely. It isn't just one like solid beam of energy like most monsters make. It's like a, a spring of hellfire coiling out from his tail within this circular pattern. When I first saw this, when I first actually looked at it up close, I was completely awestruck. I love the animation of this to bits. It is so neat. And, and you know what? Now that I've told you everything that you need to know about how to kill him, given you all of the tools that you need to take him down, I'm going to tell you how I feel about him. And like that animation, I love him just as a whole. Now, before this demo, I was aware that he existed. I had seen him walk up on screen in the first trailer with the Toby Kadashi in his mouth. Then I had avoided all further footage of him so I could stay as fresh as possible for my first encounter for him for this moment. And by God, was that a great decision. I thought I'd like him. I love purple as a color. Red is pretty neat too. He has a really neat vibe to him and he's just a big, chunky, muscly boy. And I do love me the bigger monsters. But what I actually got when I arrived to the fight was mind-blowing in comparison to my expectations. I knew I would like him. I didn't know I would love him. I didn't know he would shoot out a gas that slowly goes through every shade of purple to pink, through pink towards red, so beautifully before popping in this vivid explosion who covers himself in this fierce as fuck pink fire when he is at his strongest and some of his attacks are just genuinely so much fun to play against hell he as a whole is super fun to play against as much as i have struggled against him and i have carded to him more times than i can count already I absolutely adore his fight and fighting him in general. It is so much fun. There is so much depth to it, and I just cannot wait to see him in the full game. As it currently stands for me, I think he's right on the edge of my top 10 monsters in the whole series. I absolutely adore him, but I won't make any final judgments like that until after I see how he is integrated into the story of the full game, the way that he is presented properly as intended, rather than just this quick glimpse into him in the demo. All right, everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been a number of tips for how to beat Magna Molo in the Monster Hunter Rise demo from Josh and I's experience. Have you beaten Magna Molo yet? Do you like him as much as I do? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye